Hello, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to create a children's color by number activity book in Affinity Publisher that you can publish and sell on the Kindle Direct publishing platform. Now I'm bringing you this tutorial after posting my five hidden gem children's book niches that make a thousand plus dollars a month video a couple of weeks ago. Color by number was one of those niches and a lot of people were interested in a tutorial. So here it is. Now, if you missed that video, there is a link down below as well as a link to the other tutorial that came out of that video, how to create and sell a dot to dot activity book on KDP. So you can go ahead and check both of those out. Now, if you don't have affinity publisher, you're still going to be able to follow along using the vector editing software of your choice. The basics of what I'm going to show you are essentially going to be the same no matter what program you're using, as long as it is a vector editing program. Now, quick note, Affinity actually does have its own dedicated vector editing software called Affinity Designer, but Publisher actually has all the functionality that we need. And since we're turning this into a book at the end anyway, it actually makes the most sense to do everything all in one program to keep things simple. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're new here, I'm Rachel Harrison Sund and I help online entrepreneurs make more money so they can live more life. If that is you, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell so you can be notified every time I put out one of these videos each and every Monday. All right, so first things first, we're gonna choose some graphics to use for our color by numbers book. Now, I'm over at Creative Fabrica, which is my favorite place to get graphics for my low content books. These guys have got like tens of thousands of really high quality fonts and designs, and they've got the best license for low content publishers. So they've got two kind of different licenses. They've got full print on demand. Full print on demand means that you can uh, download any of these graphics and use them completely as is without making any customizations. And then they've also got basic print on demand, which means any of those graphics that you download, you're gonna have to add some unique and distinctive elements. So in other words, make a few customizations. Now, Creative Fabrica right now has a $1 all access subscription promotion. So you get seven full days of access to all of their resources here for $1 and then it renews at $19 a month and you can cancel at any time. Now, of course, the biggest question here is what happens after I cancel? Can I keep selling the books that I've created using the subscription? And the answer is that depends. So if you are using full print on demand, so if you have created books and you have just uploaded your interiors with these graphics without making any customizations, then you would need to stop selling the books that you've created. Now, if you have used graphics that fall under the basic print on demand license, which means you've gone ahead and made some uh, customizations, you've added some unique and distinctive elements, then you do not have to stop selling the books that you've uploaded to KDP. So of course, the basic print on demand is what I recommend for two reasons. Firstly, you get to keep selling the books that you've made using these graphics even after you have canceled your subscription. Obviously, that is a lot more preferable. Now, the second reason is because adding your own customizations, adding your own unique and distinctive elements, this is just gonna add more value to your book. It's gonna help you differentiate yourself from all of your competitors. That's what you want to be doing anyways. So I'm a big fan of using these pre-made graphics. However, customize whenever you can to make it your own unique product. And in this instance, so that you can keep selling it even after you've canceled your subscription. So you're just gonna go to the search bar, try and come up with a theme, you know, firstly try and think about the age group you're going for, what kind of themes might resonate with that age group. And then you're gonna look for some artwork. Now, coloring book pages work really, really well for this particular project because when you use a coloring book template or, you know, a coloring book graphic, you've kind of got half the work done for you already. So let's just go ahead you can type in cat coloring pages. And then you can go down the menu here. You can just tick off graphics or, or bundles if you like. Any of these other categories, you can go ahead and tick off. And then once you've found something that you want to take a look at, you just want to click on it. And a couple of things you're looking for First off, make sure you take a look and, and if it says full print on demand, that means you can use the graphics completely as is with no customizations. Now, of course, I've already recommended that you do make customizations, but if you do just want something that's ready to, to go, you wanna just download it, 
put plop it into your book and upload it straight away, make sure it says full print on demand. You'll see that right here under commercial, commercial usage allowed. Now, the next thing you want to look for is the file type. In order to make customizations to vector artwork, you're going to want an SVG file or a .ai file or a .eps file. Those are the file versions you're looking for. So for example, this one, this just has a PDF file. So you're not going to be able to go in and directly edit these graphics. So you might even want to type in SVG here so you can narrow the pool down. All right, so for example here, we've got full POD usage allowed. So again, you could just upload this completely as is if you wanted to, and then you're looking for, you've got AI, EPS, SVG. These are the files, these are vector files, and this means that they are directly editable. So that's what we want. So I've already gone ahead and found some artwork. So we're just gonna go straight over to Affinity Publisher now and we'll get going in there. All right, once you've got Affinity Publisher opened up, go ahead and set up your document. You can choose something like eight and a half by 11 inches. You could do eight by 10. Both of those work really well for this type of book. You wanna make sure you've got 300 DPI and then we'll set up the margins and I'm just gonna choose half inch margins all the way around. And we do not need a bleed. There are not going to be any design elements that leave the edge of the page so we can leave ble the bleed completely as is. Next up, we're going to import our first piece of artwork. So file place. And then we're gonna find your SVG file or your EPS file. And we're just gonna drop it right in there. I've just turned on my margin so I can take a look and I did that with Control W on a Mac. Otherwise you can just go up to View, Preview Mode. So whatever the shortcut is going to be for you, if you're on a PC, you can kind of toggle that just so you can keep your margins uh, visible. All right, first things first, I'm going to do a few little customizations to this. Like I've already mentioned, the more customizations you can do to your artwork, the better. Again, it's gonna allow you to keep selling your book. If you are on a Creative Fabrica subscription and you decide to cancel that subscription, you can keep selling the book. And B, of course, you want your book to be different than every, anyone else's. If anyone else has the same idea and happens to use the same artwork as you, well, then you're not really differentiating yourself from your competitor. So always customize wherever you can. All right, once you've kind of got your artwork sized, you can kind of start making a few customizations. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a border. So I'm just gonna go and grab my rectangle tool. I do not want to fill, so I'm gonna go up to color. There's a gray fill here. I'm just gonna cancel that by clicking this little button. I've got my stroke there and we can adjust the width in a moment. And I'm gonna drag that out. Now I'm gonna leave a little area at the bottom because that's where I want my legend to go because we're gonna to need to tell people what color each number is going to be. So we're gonna leave a little space for that uh, down below. That's probably good. And I'm gonna to go to the stroke palette. It's at zero, that's why we can't see anything. I'm just gonna hit one and see what that looks like. And now I'm gonna get rid of my print preview. So I'm gonna beef that stroke up a little bit to two. Okay, great. And then I'm gonna to wanna to make that probably touch the border. And I'm gonna just go ahead and name this border. Always good to name your layers so you know what's what, because once you start getting you know a dozen or more layers, <laughs> it starts to get confusing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lock that layer so that I can't accidentally move it. Okie dokie. Next, I'm gonna do a couple of customizations here. First, I think I'm gonna just kind of remove this background, maybe it's clouds or hills, I'm not quite sure, but I'm just gonna double click on it. And once you keep clicking, you're gonna see all of the individual little nodes come up and you can just start deleting them. 
kind of either one by one or in groups. So you can see here, I'm just going to select a bunch of these nodes and then I can just hit delete and then they're gone. Now you probably noticed suddenly I'm on this um, transparent background because I'm editing this vector. It's kind of kicked me into a new window. Don't worry about that for now. We'll get back to the original one once we're done editing this. So I'm just removing whatever that was in the background, the mountains or clouds or whatever it was there. Kind of see one rogue dot here. That one's kind of attached, so I'm just going to go ahead. So I'm just grabbing these little tools here to get rid of that little lump. And I know I'm being fussy here, but this kind of thing bugs me. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm also going to get, get rid of these lines because they're not really going to serve us when we start actually turning this into a color by number. So all these little squiggly lines, I'm just going to ditch. So again, I'm doing this with my direct selection tool or in this program, actually, it's called the node tool. So I'm not doing it with the move tool. I'm doing it with the node tool. All right, so I've kind of removed the elements that I don't want there, but now I think I want to add a few elements of my own. So I'm just going to go back to my untitled document here. And now you can see that it has incorporated the changes that we've made over in this um, sort of this edit window here. So <laughs> this happened to me the first time I used this program. You know, I, I clicked in to edit. Suddenly I was over in this window and then I was like, hey, wait a minute, where's my original document? So if that happens to you, <laughs> just look over. If you've already saved your document, you'll see the title here. I haven't done that yet. So it just says untitled. So that's where we are. That's where we uh, go to get back into our original document. Now I'm going to add a couple of elements here using a couple of the tools in Affinity Publisher. Now, first I might want to move a couple of these elements around just so that I actually have some room to do that. So let's just see what we have access to. So again, I've double clicked. Now I'm back into this edit window. I can grab my move tool and I can just grab an element. So this is one element, so I can just drag that around if I want to. Now, depending on how your document is set up, you may or may not have some difficulty with this. Now, what would be great is if, you know, if this turtle was on a layer and the mountains were on a layer, that might happen. It might not, depending on what happened to your file when you imported it into this program. So, for example, this is all kind of one shape now you can try and ungroup it if you have an ungroup option but if not like this file you might be a little bit more limited it doesn't mean you can't make adjustments but it's just going to be a little bit more um, work to do so so i'm going to keep things simple right now um, i might just add a couple of elements down here uh, a couple of elements up here just to make it a little bit more customized let's just go back into the other window here Okay, I think I want it about there. So first I'm gonna add, I think a couple of flowers down here and then I might add a sun and a couple of clouds up here. Let's go ahead and do that. So definitely make use of some of the tools I'm gonna show you right now. So if you go into this shape tool right here, look at all of these tools that you've got access to. These can be excellent in just creating some basic shapes. So for the flower tool, and some of these might not be obvious at first, so we're going to create a flower, but we're going to use this thing called the cog tool. So let's go ahead and drag that out. I'm press, pressing shift to constrain the proportion so that it doesn't, you know, you don't get any weird stuff like that. Just press shift, drag it out to about the size that you want. Make sure that the stroke is this about the same weight. Like for example, if you drag this out, and the stroke was like this, that obviously doesn't work. So this is looks about right anyway, so we'll keep it at two points. Now the cool stuff that you can do, 
Go up to this menu up here. You're going to see teeth, inner radius, hole radius, tooth size, notch size, curvature. Just start playing around and seeing what you can come up with. So for a flower, we're probably going to want like, I don't know, five or six petals. Let's try six and see what that looks like. Then go to inner radius. Okay, now you can kind of already see we're already starting to get a flower shape here. Hole radius. We can kind of keep that like that. Tooth size. Let's make that a bit bigger. Curvature. All right, now that that's pretty cool considering, right, what that started off looking like. So just play around with these shapes. There's a whole bunch of them here. So that was the cog tool, but there's, and we're going to use a couple more in a minute here, but that's a pretty decent flower, super quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock my original layer here so it doesn't move. So you can go ahead and name this flower if you want. I'm just going to leave it for now because I know what it is. but maybe we want a couple of those. So I'm just going to option click and drag. Now, obviously this is creating a little bit of a mess here. So I'm just going to choose that first one. I'm going to go to color and I'm going to give it a white fill. I'm just going to click this little white button here. Actually, that's more of a gray. So we want, oh no, it is white. Okay. And the reason this is still showing up like this is because it's sitting behind this one. So go up to layer, arrange, move back one, or sorry, move up one is what we should have done. Move to front. Now it's sitting on top nicely. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe turn it around. You can keep it behind or you can, you know, move it off to the side a little bit. Whatever you want. Zoom out, take a look. All right, then you might want to add a stem. So we'll go to the pen tool. So again, don't worry about what it looks like right now. We can fix it afterward. We're just going to kind of create the stem. So I'm just going to click and then I'm going to do another click and I'm going to drag. Now that is clearly way too big of a stroke. So I think we had two on the other one. So we'll do that. Now with the pen tool, the longer these handles are, the longer, the bigger of a curve you're going to get. So I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about here. If I just click beside, I'm going to get this. We don't want that. So I'm just actually going to click right on top of this and it'll get rid of that handle. And then we'll just get like a nice short line. So the pen tool can take a little bit of getting used to it, but just experiment with it and you'll kind of figure it out. Um, so now we'll go ahead, finish off our stem here. And again, there's this huge handle here. So I know that I'm going to get sort of like this unwieldy curve. So I'm just going to click on it to get rid of that handle. And then it'll be, I'm not going to have a big curve there. Now zoom out. Might want to make the stem a bit bigger. So you can go in at any time. You're going to use the node tool and you can just choose a node. You can move it over. The handles will always adjust your curve. So you can just grab that, and do what you want with it. Now we want to send this shape to the back. So arrange, move to back. Basically just trying to hide the stem. Rotate that a little bit. And you can go ahead and create another one for our other flower. Uh, 
And we'll bring that to the front. And we didn't give that a fill, so we'll go ahead, go back, give that a fill. Now you're noticing that, you'll notice that there, there's no fill here, and that's just basically because of how we set this shape up. So what we might actually have to do is just grab our circle tool and just drag out. That's not a circle, okay. We can actually get rid of the stroke there. We don't need it. And just drag that over top. All right. So there we've got a couple of flowers. Now let's add a sun and a couple of clouds. And then we'll go ahead and actually turn this into a color by number. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab the double star tour tool. I'm going to Click shift as I'm dragging it out. Again, I'm trying to constrain the proportions. Zero, 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 zero is black. Make sure that that's two points. And again, you can play around with how many points this sun has. I think five was pretty good inner radius, you can play around with that. Same thing with the point radius. It's probably good. And then I'll use the circle tool, the ellipse tool. I'm going to find the middle and I'm going to Shift and Command, again, that's on a Mac. I don't know what it is on a PC. That's got a white fill. That's why you can't see what's behind it. And we'll add a couple of clouds. So there is actually a cloud tool here as well. So that's this. And again, you just drag something out. And then make a few customizations to it. So you can add as many bubbles as you want. So you can see, like, you can obviously, whatever your imagination comes up with here, these tools can be used for lots of things, not just, you know, what they say they're for. Uh, in a radius, let's see, oh, we don't want that. Happy with this. Okay. And now I'm going to select that. And I'm going to convert it to curves. Now that is going to allow me to click the node tool. I'm going to select nodes and I'm just going to delete them. So I'm just selecting it with the node tool and deleting it. And this is just so I can get the cloud shape that I want here. There's something weird going on at the bottom. So again, I'm just I've got the node tool here. I'm going to click on it to get my handles. Bloop. Same with the other side. I'm going to click and then just drag my handle. There we go. So I've got a very quick cloud. And of course, you know, you could, if you wanted to, you know, customize these a bit, up to you. that. Let's put that in front of our sun. And you can just kind of copy and paste. You can click and drag. Again, option on a Mac. I think that might be alt on a PC. All right, once you're happy with your customizations, we'll go ahead and we'll turn this into a color by number. So just to make sure that we're keeping things neat and tidy, we're going to just, we're going to select everything that we've just created here and right click 
and you're going to group everything. That basically puts it so it's kind of like on one, almost like on one layer. I'm gonna put the border at the top. I'm just gonna drag that group down. And then I'm, I'm gonna click the original artwork layer as well. And I'm gonna group that as well. All right, so I'm just gonna call that original. And I'm going to lock this. Now I'm going to create a new layer. Now to start off creating our color by number, we're just going to start creating different sections. Now color by number, they're kind of meant to be almost like a puzzle. And they're really good color by numbers. When you first take a look at it, it's kind of good if you can't see what the original drawing was. That's sort of the delight of color by number is seeing the picture kind of take shape as you color in the sections and then suddenly whatever it is you're your coloring starts to take form into a drawing. So the more small sections you add, the more of uh, you know sort of like a puzzle it becomes. Now obviously keep your age range in mind. You want to keep it as simple as possible. If you know if you if you're um, targeting sort of a young younger um, age group, the older you get though, you know older children or teenagers or even adults, you can make it as complex as you want. Uh, you know, if you really want to turn it into almost like a puzzle where you have no idea what you're looking at until you start coloring, then the more and more sections you're going to have to add. So we're just going to go, go ahead and grab our pen tool and you can start wherever you want. And we're not going to get too complex here. Just, you know, we don't want this video to be three hours long, but just start creating sections. So I'm starting on my border. I'm going to click up here on my other border and I'm just going to create a line. Now I'm just going to deselect that line because I don't want to make all one line here. Now I can just press command and then click and then it's deselected. So if you're on a PC, you might have to just play around to figure out how to deselect Basically, if you don't deselect, you're, you're just going to keep drawing a line like this. But you only want to be drawing single lines. So the idea is, you know, you want to click, you want to create your line, and then you may, may either have to click up here and click to sort of deselect it. Or if you do have that uh, shortcut, then you can use that. So apologies, my familiarity on a, a PC isn't uh, totally up to par. So again, just kind of click anywhere you want and drag out the handles to make curves and then deselect. And you know, if anything weird happens, like what just happened here, you can just go ahead to select the node uh, and just fix that however you want. Okay, now if we were keeping this for quite young children, I would probably leave the sort of difficulty level right about here. If this was for someone a little bit older, I would probably keep adding sections, more and more sections, until the picture, the artwork, became a little bit more obscured, so it wasn't quite as obvious what we were looking at. You know, that's kind of starting to happen with the background here, we're kind of not sure which parts the mountain and which parts the sky anymore. Uh, you know, there's some of that happening down here, but it's still pretty obvious that we're looking at a turtle. So if you wanted to obscure it a little bit more, I would just keep adding a few more sections, you know, maybe on the shell. Just 
just so it wasn't, you know, quite so obvious uh, what we're looking at. Now, once you're happy with the amount of sections that you have, go back over here and we're just going to name this sections. And now we're going to have to add the numbers. So this is where it's handy to have your original artwork on its own layer that you can kind of, um, you know, if you need to refer back to it, we can just uncheck our sections layers. So we can just see what our original artwork looked like. That's especially handy if you're working with a really complex image and you know you, you yourself start losing what the actual image was behind all the sections. So make sure that you've got that separately that you can just easily turn on and off. So let's use another layer here and we'll start creating our legend. So let's see, we probably got We've got yellow for the sun, we'll have blue for the sky. We can have green for the hills, maybe like a dark green for the turtle. Maybe these can be yellow as well, this part of the shell. We can do like a dark blue for the water here, maybe a gray for the rocks, and maybe like an orange or something like that for the flowers. So that's seven colors right there. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to turn on my margins again. And I'm just going to drag out one, two, four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to put that at the end at our margin. Then I'm going to grab all of these. And I'm going to head up here to alignment. And I'm gonna to go to align horizontally, space horizontally. And now they are perfectly spaced apart. So that is just a nice little trick there. Um, I'm also just gonna grab this border for a second. Actually, first I'm just gonna name this our legend. And I'm going to unlock the border for a quick second here. Just going to move that up a little bit because we're going to need some space to write uh, what these colors actually are. So grab the text box tool. I'm going to drag out a number one. And let's go ahead and make that like 16 points. Maybe like 20 points actually. And pick a font. I like to use sans serifs for this type of thing. We'll do black. Now you don't actually have to do squares like I've done. You can just have the numbers if you want with like a little equal sign. And those squares are a little bit big. So I'm just going to quickly fix that. Let's go ahead and start putting these numbers down. And I'll group those together as well. Legend numbers, we'll call it. And then go ahead and create another layer and we'll start laying the numbers down. So let's go ahead and turn on our sections again. All right, so maybe our first one can be light blue. And we'll, we'll fix this up after as well. All 
All right, grab our type again, and we will just do a number one. And for size, we do want to keep it a bit on the small side just so that it does actually fit. But I think it might be able to go up just slightly, maybe to about 14. And I think that's good. All right. Now we're just going to copy and paste. And if you ever do get confused, you can just go back and turn off our sections layer just to make sure. Okay, yes, that's all sky. Okay, so this is another one that needs a one. Now we can either do gray for the clouds. Let's do that. Okay, let's make that 12. Just so we've got room. All right, anything else we want gray? I think we can do the rocks gray as well. And maybe we can do the turtle's toenails gray as well. All right, so I'm going to quickly go ahead and fill all of this in and zoom this up so that zoom up the speed so you don't have to sit through it all. All right, once you have all of your sections numbered and you've got your legend filled out at the bottom with the various colors, you are done. Well, you're done your first page anyways. <laughs> if you're making a book, you're gonna be making a bunch more of these. Now, once you've got all of your pages in place to make this complete, you're gonna to wanna to add a title page and a copyright page. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shift these pages around so we can do that. So I'm gonna drag this page down here just to reorder it. And let's give ourselves a couple of pages here. So you'll want your title page. Grab your text box. And pick a font. And dress up your title page however you'd like. And copyright page. You can put your logo in here if you've got one. And your copyright. So that's Option G on a Mac. In Windows, I think it's Alt plus 0169, I think. If anyone knows, you can leave a comment.
And if you have any contact information, like a website or an email that you'd like to leave, you can go ahead and put that here as well. Now that is essentially all you need for your copyright page. And once those two pages are done and you've got all of your artwork pages filled out, you're going to go up to File, Export, PDF for Print. Make sure you're at 300 dpi. You can preview the export when complete. You want all pages, not just the current page. And then Export. And there you go. This is your color by number book. Now you can see that it is missing a cover. Now, when you submit files to KDP, you need a completely separate file for the cover. Now I've done a load of videos all about how to create book covers in Affinity Publisher. So you can go ahead and check those out on my channel. I'll link to a bunch of those below um, and you can find out how to do that there. But for now, this is our interior color by numbers book. Pretty darn cute. Well, there you have it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're ready to get in there and create a color by number activity book of your own. And then of course, sell it on Amazon and make some money. Now, if you've never self-published a book through KDP before and you'd like a bit of a helping hand getting started, download my free guide, Three Steps to Publishing Your First Low Content Book in Less Than a Day. And for some additional help, be sure to join my free Facebook group, Low Content Profits. Links to both of those are below. Now, for some other ideas for highly profitable children's KDP niches, do check out my five hidden gem children's book niches that make $1,000 plus a month video next. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like and definitely subscribe. Share it with anyone you think might find it helpful. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.